Hello, in this video we're going to be taking a look at Warhammer 40,000 Imperium Issue 2, the three Necron Warriors you get with it, and then trying them out on the battlefield. Hello, I'm Will, this is Mike, we're the Tabletop Donkeys. Hello. Today we're bringing you issue four, two of Warhammer 40,000 Imperium magazine. This issue comes with three Necron Warrior models, a pot of Rune Lord brass paint, and a starter brush. And we're having a look at the contents of the magazine first, but if you want to skip to the battle with the three models, then you can do that using the chapter bars or a time code in the description. But we will have a look inside this issue. First up we learn about Necron Warriors. These are the mainstay of the Necron Legions. Robotic warriors with very little autonomy. They can take a lot of punishment and they're living metal shells can even repair themselves and they carry deadly alien weapons like the Gauss Flayer as these three models have. And like we've had with the models from the previous issue we get a battle record for the Necrons so you can give them a name and record things like battle damage, glorious achievements and so forth and uh, we'll at least give them a name for the, for our battle which you can see a bit later on. Uh, then we have the background on the Zarakan dynasty of the Necrons, the uh, dynasty of the Silent King himself, Zarak, and they apparently have been some of the slower Necrons to awaken from their sleep and they found the galaxy much changed but now that the Silent King himself has returned they have set about their what he commands them to do with purpose. And here there's a background on Zarak himself, the last of the Silent Kings who once ruled the ancient Necron tier race. And he has now returned and in the area of space called the Pariah Nexus he is building a super weapon which he hopes will be capable of wiping out all life in the galaxy. There's also a map here showing where the Zarak and Dynasty are rising. And then the background on the Ultramarines chapter of the Space Marines. Uh, these are, if you like, the exemplars of the Space Marines. Their Primarch Robuto Gilliman wrote the Codex Astartes, which most chapters of Space Marines follow, so the Ultramarines follow it with even more exacting detail than most chapters. And there's a, an army of Ultramarine models there, as it explains. Using the wisdom of the Codex Astartes, they can adapt to any battlefield situation, and few chapters have the skill and dedication that the Ultramarines do in following it. Then we have the build guide for the Necron Warriors. These are very simple to put together. They come in about five parts each. Like with the previous models, you just clip them off the sprue and then they can push together, or you can use glue if you prefer to make them a bit more long-lasting. And then we have the first of our painting guides, how to paint Citadel miniatures. So there's first there's a general overview of painting, and then we'll talk a little bit about painting the Necrons. Here there's just some suggestions about how you might want to set out your hobby area, the kind of things you might need. It also suggests you cover the surface you're going to paint with some old newspaper or a cloth to stop getting paint on the table or whatever you're painting on, which is a good idea. Suggestions on using a water pot, which you'll need to wash your brushes off. They have a, a branded water pot here, but you can just use a mug or other receptacle. I don't think it mentions it there, but well, don't leave the brush in the pot bristle side down or be careful with it to so see you don't bend the bristles yeah. as well. And it also has advice on changing your water off and if, it, your, if the water gets coloured it might affect the colour of your paints, particularly if you have metallic paints because they have um, flakes of metal in them that you don't want to get in your other paints. Then it talks about how you can use a palette to control the paint, so it suggests you take some paint, put it onto the palette and mix it with a little water to thin it down, because if you apply it too thick it can obscure some of the detail, and then also how much paint to put on your brush. There's a little picture here that gives you an example. Yeah, and it does say that you can use something like an old plate or a ceramic tile, or possibly even the plastic um, container that the models came in if you got the issue on a big bit of cardboard. And then we learn how to apply some of our new Rune or Brass paint to the Necron models. So because you've thinned the paint down it will be a little bit watery so you probably need to apply several coats but as you can see here after three coats you should have a nice bright metallic finish. Yeah and it is always better to do multiple thin coats of the paint rather than one thick one because you might have obscure details and it's much easier to add more paint than it is to take it away. And uh, it only says to paint the parts that are going to be that colour in the end, so that's just the main body of the Necron, not the uh, gun. And likewise with the Royal Warden, but you can leave his cloak unpainted because it will be painted a different colour later. And then there's the four Necron models with the first stage completed, painted up like this. This is obviously just the start of painting these models, but uh, as we get more paints and more techniques, they will start to eventually come to life. But that's it for the contents of this issue, so I'll get on to the game content now where we get to use these three Necron Warriors on the battlefield. So now we 
we can get on to our mission for this issue, Escape Route. So within the damage repair complex, a trio of Necron warriors have been reanimated and they've been ordered to try and make their way to the Canoptic Chambers to reactivate a Canoptic Plasma Site and that Plasma Site will be able to uh, revive the Destroyer Cults within the complex and uh, those should hopefully deal with the Space Marine Intruders. Meanwhile, the Primaris Lieutenant has survived his encounter with the Royal Warden and has stumbled across these trio of Necron warriors and is going to try and stop them from awaking the Destroyers. So we can get into our game. We have the board set up. We have the three Necron Warriors we've got on this issue set up along one side of the board and the Lieutenant alongside the other. And uh, you can see the Lieutenant's profile here is exactly the same as it was in the last issue but we have the profile for the Necron Warriors. So they move five inches like the Royal Warden and they hit on threes like him as well and they have two shots with their Gauss Flares. They only have one wound each and only have a four plus save so they're not nearly as tough. We have some new rules here. So the Necron's goal is to reach the opposite board edge and to do that they need to touch the edge of the board. And we have rules here for advancing. So in the movement phase, when you're coming to move a model, you can decide it will advance, in which case you roll a dice and then you add that result to the model's movement. So you can see in this example, this Necron has rolled a four, so he gets to move nine inches. Uh, however, the model cannot shoot again later in the turn. We have a sample playthrough here, so you can see in his first turn, the Space Marine Lieutenant is moving closer to the Necrons, and then uh, since he has two shots with his pistol, he can split his shots between two of the Necron Warriors, so he does so. Unfortunately, he misses one a bit by rolling a one, because he hits on twos. And over on the next page, unfortunately for the Space Marine Lieutenant, uh, his Necron foe makes his save with a five, nearly a four. And then on the Necron turn, one of the Warriors has advanced, and then the other two Warriors have moved up normally. And uh, even though they have two shots each, it, uh, we're going through the examples here, you can actually just roll them all together since they're both shooting at the Lieutenant, and uh, they get three hits on the Lieutenant, uh, who only makes one of his saves, and then the game will continue. And also mentions down here, you can have a rematch where you swap sides, or you could use the Raw Warden in the place of the Necron Warriors. So we might do that afterwards, we'll see how it goes. So that was a little brief tutorial, but we will go over that as we get into the game. So here we are with our board set up. We have uh, Lieutenant Cassian facing off against the Silent Death. We rolled for the Necron Warrior's name off camera. But the Space Marine, uh, Lieutenant Cassian gets to go first. So, so Lieutenant Cassian's just going to move up, try and get into the middle. Hopefully to block off any of the Necron Warriors. Then like it does in the tutorial, I'm going to split my shots. So I'm going to put one shot into this one and one shot into this one in the middle. So shooting at uh, one down the bottom first, hitting on a two. That's a hit. And the Necron Warrior has four plus save. So I need a 4 plus to not die. That's a 3. Yeah, so he takes a wound, but he only has one wound, so he's removed instantly. And the Necron Warrior that's in the middle, hit on a 2, yep, that's a hit. And a 4 plus. I made that this time, so it doesn't die. And it's on to the Necron turn. I'll do the same as they did in the example, so this one on the edge is going to advance, so I roll a d6 and add this to my movement that I can move. 2, so that's 5 plus 2 is 7. So move up a whole 7 inches, get to here, try and get off the board edge. Whereas the other one is only going to move up its 5 to there. Models that advanced can't shoot, but the one that didn't advance can, so he's going to shoot at the left hand, and he has two shots, which hit on threes. They both hit, double six. And uh, Trent Cassian has a three plus save. Uh, he's fine, he made both of those. Back onto the Space Marine turn. Uh, yeah, that Necron Warrior that advanced, we need to advance another two inches to get off the board. Whereas this one, we need to roll a four in his advance roll. So I'm going to put both of the pistol shots into the one that advanced and hope the uh, other Necron doesn't get to move far enough. I've got two shots hitting on two, so they both hit. So I'm going to two saves on four, and I failed one, so he only got one wound, so he dies. Needed that extra shot, goes back to the Necron turn. And I will try and, I'm never going to kill the left hand, so I will try and advance. And as we said, we need a four to get enough movement. A three is not quite enough, but I'm still going to move up the eight inches that allows me to. So it gets to there. I suppose I could have moved the left hand to try and block you off, but it probably still would have needed a four. Well, there's no need to move to stop the Necron. I can't physically block it for the board edge, so all I can do is shoot at it. Two shots hitting on twos. Oh, getting one hit. Needing a four to save. Oh, I did. Oh. So the Necron shrugs off the shot, and then in my turn, move off the board. So that'll be a Necron victory in our first game, and we'll set it back up, and uh, maybe we'll do a best of three. So we reset up, and uh, let Lieutenant Cassian go first again. Like last time we're going to move, I'm going to move slightly more centrally. It's to about here. And I'll put one shot into this Necron in the middle, and one shot into this one on the top left this time. So if you get the one in the middle, missed, that one there, hit him with a two. Four plus save. 
made it. Uh, in this game, I think I'm going to advance with all three of them this time, but we'll try and get them really close. So we'll start this one over here, rolling his advance. That's a six. So this one gets to go 11. So 11 inches gets it all the way over there. So one move we need. Uh, the one in the centre rolls only a two, so it can only go seven inches. And it goes slightly to the side to go around the. I've done it. And finally, the one in the corner over here gets a four, so going nine inches to there. But are all of my models advanced, so none of them could shoot. So Cassian's got a lot of work to do. These two Necrons, this one here and this one at the top of the board, can move off normally. He will move a little bit, he'll move like this, just so this Necron will have to go around him, but hopefully that one will die. So you're going to put one pistol shot into this Necron down the bottom and one here into this one at the top. So shooting at this one at the bottom first, hitting on a two, getting a hit. And I pass my save. And shooting at the one at the top, hitting on a two. Oh, missed again. Oh dear. Uh, yeah, and so that means on my turn, well this one's definitely within five of the board edge, so you can get to the edge there. Yeah. And this one here, it might not be able to get round all in one go, but yeah, I can just advance as well on that one. It doesn't look yeah, and I'll try and advance with the other one. Rolling a two, so seven. Yeah, that's actually enough. So all three <laughs> off the board in this game. So that's a, a Necron. <laughs> Definitely a Necron victory. Do another game and the Necrons will try and kill the Lieutenant rather than getting off the board. Because that's the other way they can win. So set up again. Um, we'll let Lieutenant Cassin go first again. So moving up six inches gets him to the middle of the board pretty much. And uh, we'll split my attacks between these two Necrons. So one on the bottom left, we on a two. That's a hit. Four plus save. Oh, neck. So that one is killed. And the one in the middle, hitting on a two. Oh, that's hit as well. Uh, pass the save with four. So on to my turn, I'm going to move up both of them normally this time, so they can both shoot, so they both get to about that far away. And then we've got four shots, and I, I combine the two because they're all shooting the left hand, and it's all the same dice, as it says in, it suggests in the example. So four shots needing threes to hit. Well, they all hit. Four, three plus saves for Lieutenant Cassian. Now he failed two, so he's down to three wounds. And like last time, we're using the dice to show how many wounds they have remaining rather than counting up the wounds they've taken. Cassian's turn. He's going to stay where he is and he'll split his shots between the two remaining Necrons. So shooting this one down the bottom. Hitting on a two, that's a hit. Mm, four plus save, which I've made. Yeah, shooting at the other one. Hitting on a two, that's a hit. With a four. four plus save, which I've made. Four for four. So on to my turn. We'll move them both up five. This one come over a little bit like that and but as they go past they will shoot again because they didn't advance needing threes getting three hits this time three three plus saves Cassian's failed another so he's down to two wounds and his turn he's gonna move it's easily within six so he's gonna move to here so this neck one has to go around him it will split half shots again so shooting at the one nearest the camera hitting on a two that is a hit four plus save oh no killed one at last and shooting at the other one Hit him with a two. And pass the save. Ooh. So I might be able to get off the board. No, not quite. So, But what I'm going to do is I'm going to move normally and then shoot again rather than advance. I could, I could have advanced and got off the board, as you can see, but we're trying to shoot this time. So we've got one hit because the two is a miss. Yeah, three plus save. And he's all right. And then we can't physically block the Necron, so all we can do is shoot at him. Two shots hitting on twos, getting two hits. Ah, and there we go, there's enough to take yeah. out the Necrons, isn't it? But the Necrons definitely won the best of three there. So we'll do one more game, we'll use the Raw Warden instead of the Necron Warriors, as the magazine suggested. So here we are, we've got the Raw Warden set up in the opposite corner to Lieutenant Cassian. Let Cassian go first again. I'm going to move up, as usual, try and physically block the Raw Warden. Put two shots into him, hitting on twos, getting one. He has three plus save, remember his profile from last issue, which he made anyway. We'll move up normally with the Raw Warden, so he also has a 5 inch move, and he has 2 shots hitting on 3s as well. So we've got 1 hit. 3 plus save, Cassian's alright. Back to Lieutenant Cassian's turn, we're going to move up that way. So again, the Raw Warden has to go around him a little bit, and then put 2 shots into the Raw Warden, getting 2 hits. A 3 plus save, made them both, and uh, we'll move normally again. Get into there, and shoot, getting 1 hit again. 3 plus save for the Lieutenant, he's fine. Back his turn, he's just gonna get in the Raw Warden's way and shoot him twice, hitting on twos, getting two hits. Threes to save. Oh, we made them. <laughs> Might be enough. I'm gonna advance. Yeah, it is. So two inches is enough. Seven inches is plenty, so he will be able to get off the board yeah. anyway. So we'll call that uh, Necron victory for this issue and uh, recap these games for you now.
So that was our look at issue two of Warhammer 40,000 Imperium magazine. How do you think those games went? Um, well, obviously they went pretty well. Um, it's a very difficult scenario for the Space Marine left hand to win. It can be done. Like It's basically going to be whether the Necron player makes their saves or not. Yeah, pretty much. Like In the first turn, you could have killed two of my Necrons, and then you probably would have had a reasonable chance yeah, of taking out the third. If, yeah, and you probably only have about two turns to do it, um, unless the Necron player rolls very poorly for their advance rolls. And as a Necron player, you're probably actually better off just advancing all your warriors, and they're probably not going to kill the left hand yeah advance all three I had two already within range of moving off yeah just even with a normal move yeah if I roll well for my saves and well for my advance rolls there's very little you can do to stop me really and the game of the Raw Warden is not too surprising either since he has more wounds than the Necron Warriors combined and a better save so because the melee combat is not currently a thing so can't hold him up and again with him the tactic is just advance because if you get a decent advance roll on the first turn you might be right next to the wall edge mm. anyway with him um, yeah and we didn't bother no, doing any games where the Necron's got to go first because then it just gives a plate this space means less time and likewise we didn't play the raw warden one multiple times because it was pretty obvious what was going to happen so but you know the, the point of this game is not to be a super balanced game it's to teach you some more rules yeah and advancing and advancing is again a pretty handy rule just for getting that little bit of extra mobility when if you have units that aren't in range of something or they can't see anything to shoot at might as well advance them to get them a little bit of extra distance yeah or if they're not units that don't really have much range capability in the first place yeah then, uh, it's not the most exciting rule in the world but it is pretty handy and it's something you're probably going to do a lot as well. It's not a difficult extra rule to add on. Actually, what I think what I like about it is that it relates to the objective of the mission. So, therefore, you're incentivized to use it. And for beginners, it's probably, to, in order to learn the rules, you're more likely to remember them and, and make use of them well if you're if the game in which they're introduced yeah. sort of, it makes sense. Getting, yeah, in the context. Killing the left turn is less important than reactivating this canoptic plasma site. So, yeah. Although, speaking of the rules, we're not sure if you technically can split shots with a left hand pistol like you can. Yeah, in the full rules, it's pretty sure you can't split the shots of a single weapon. If a model has multiple range weapons you can split the different weapons between different models and later on um, infantry units in particular tend to move as a unit rather than individuals so you can have different individuals shoot at different targets and later in in the magazine I suspect these Necron warriors are going to be counted as a unit so the lieutenant splitting his shots of them officially he'd be shooting at a single unit so it wouldn't break the rules but that is a little bit odd sometimes with these magazines they do are different to how the final rules will end up being in a way that's wrong but it's nothing too much much to worry about, I think. Actually, given our observations on the mission, it's probably because if he was forced to shoot oh, a yeah, single neck on every turn, it, possible. he wouldn't be able to do it. But just to, something to be aware of yeah. if you're new is that that's not... Eventually, that will not be allowed. Well, I suppose we can talk about the three moles we got. And we won't talk too much about them since we actually get some more fairly soon. I like the aesthetic of the Necron Warriors. I like the fact that they kind of look battered and beaten up. And some of them almost look like they're sort of robotic zombies as well. They're sort of shuffling forwards or yeah, staggering it, forwards. It, I quite like that. It's like the futuristic undead legions kind of look the Necrons are going. They are damaged enough to make them individually look unique. But if you look at them at a distance, they obviously are all part of the same group. A little bit odd number of Necron Warriors to get. Usually they'll be in units of 10 and also worth noting that these three models are from the starter paint set so they are technically unique sculpts so if you do want to collect all unique sculpts we just want a bit more variety in your Necron Warriors it's nice to have and this is the only place that you can get them other than the uh, starter yeah. paint set yeah, it's much cheaper to get them this way and as you might notice from the painting line, they're extremely easy to paint since they're basically all one colour. And, and the way the magazine tells you to paint them might not look like much at the moment, but they will add more colours to them soon and they'll start to look a bit more interesting, I guess. Yeah, the painting guides is um, something from the other magazines. They're really obviously aimed at beginners and they are actually really good for beginners as well. And the only thing to note is that they tend not to tell you to use a primer before you paint the models. They tell you to paint onto the bare plastic, which usually isn't the best idea. Normally you want to use some kind of primer to so that the paint sticks to the model better and it is worth noting that Rune Lord Brass does come as a spray which is much quicker when getting the base coat down and also with the starter brush you get uh, they're really not very good quality unfortunately although I suppose if you've already done miniature wargaming you probably have better paint brushes available and if you're a beginner it doesn't really matter if you ruin the starter brush it's not the end of the world since it's so cheap at least and if you are new to painting then um, perhaps it can be easy to be intimidated by impressive looking paint jobs but if you follow the instructions of the magazine it will very gradually build you up and slowly teach you to become a better painter yeah, it's, had so, a good, uh, it's had a good pace 
Yeah, I guess don't be too dismayed as well if the models you start painting don't look as they do as you see in artwork or even as the ones you have to see on the on screen. We've been both been painting for a while and our first models we painted look terrible, so yeah. you'll get better with time. Yeah, and, and yeah, it also teaches you some uh, general good tips for painting, like make sure you thin your paints down with a bit of water yeah. and... Uh, Put newspaper down and use a palette to control the paint. Things that will help you get better, better results, basically. But otherwise, I don't think there's too much more to say about this issue. So if you like this content, do leave a like and subscribe and uh, leave any comments if you've been getting the magazine as well. Uh, we'd like to hear how you've been getting on with it. We've been the Table of Donkeys and we'll see you in the next one. Bye for now.